Hello everyone. I'm going to be joined by Dr. Gallus in a couple minutes and we will be talking about recovery after tummy tuck, which is one of our very favorite surgeries, both of us. Um, we have similar practices, which is kind of funny because she is in San Diego and I am in Cleveland, Ohio. As soon as she pops on here, there she is. All right, should be coming on in a second. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Hanging in there. How yeah, it's, it's been a month. We've had three people out for three weeks now. Two with COVID, one on quarantine. <sighs> and then were they vaccinated, not vaccinated? Uh, no, can you not ask? Yeah, I mean, I'm not requiring it. I don't think they were, but... Yeah. Obviously, my patient care coordinator lost her dad last week from COVID. One of my receptionists slash MA lost her dad earlier in the year from COVID. And my cousin died two days ago from COVID. She was 28. Your cousin? Yeah. And otherwise healthy. I don't think she was vaccinated. I don't know for sure. But yeah, healthy 28-year-old. Mm, that's terrible. Yeah, it's been, there's a little bump in San Diego, but over I saw the San Diego County put out a thing like there's let's say 510 people hospitalized with COVID and 500 of them are unvaccinated and 10 of them are vaccinated and then it just yeah it's been it's not our we're over 70 percent vaccinated in San Diego wow yeah that's so good it's not you know we're we're doing okay yeah. But it is really scary. And it's a bummer because I feel like we were at that point where everyone was like, I'm going to Vegas. I'm traveling. And I went to Hawaii. Um, people are tra trying to travel. I know a lot of people who went to Europe. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're having to rethink all of that just when you got all excited about maybe going somewhere again. True. Well, yeah. and um, the dad who just died, my patient care coordinator said he was vaccinated. He's in Florida. My cousin's also in Florida. I know numbers are higher there. Cleveland's oh. been okay, but Ohio's starting to come up. Oh, okay. Yeah, Florida is pretty bad. My mom just left to go to Florida last night. Ugh. I feel like she might be invincible. <laughs> so, Hopefully. And she's vaccinated. Good. She's pretty sturdy. It's like the third or fourth time she's gone during this whole shenanigan. So. Oh my gosh. I know we're scheduled to go in October and I'm just going to wait and see. We'll see what's happening. To Florida? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, we got to plan some trips. So we have something to look forward to. Yeah. If we absolutely. Cancel them. We'll cancel. Yeah. I think that's, that's fair. Are you going to go to plastic surgery in the meeting in Atlanta or no? Cause it's I am registered. Yeah. Planning oh, okay. on going, but again, we'll kind of see how things go. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah, I'm planning to go. Yeah. We already have a bunch of commitments and whatnot there. Yeah, so I'm on a, a panel and mm -hmm. plus what I would like to about? meet you in person. Yeah, I know. Um, what panel are you on? Um, it's about work life balance will be which will be extra hilarious as the kids come buzzing through here in their Captain America <laughs> and astronaut costumes in a couple minutes. So <laughs> balance. What's a ba yeah. yeah, no balance. I know. What that is. It's fine. Um cool. Very nice. Yeah. I think I'm on some. My dog is sleeping in the background. Aww. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, speaking of work life balance, this morning I got up early because I was getting ready for a case. I was doing facial surgery, and um, my dog was sick, like, and has been on and off sick for a few days, but like really looked bad. And then my youngest, it was her first day of school, so I was bringing her to school. And so there's just a lot going on. And I'm like, I have to start this. I have to get my day going. So figured out a plan to get the dog to the vet and then drop my daughter off at, at um, school and then went to the OR. So yeah, we've all had it. I uh, once had the OR bump up a case and I didn't realize they had an I got a call from them and I was dropping my son off at his first day of kindergarten. They were like, oh, you're scheduled to start. So I called my patient and I was like, hey, I am dropping wide off at Kinnerard. I'll be there. She's also a mom. She was totally fine with it. Yeah. Just one of yeah. those things. I know. So I was like, yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it all. It was a little hectic and then we figured it out. And luckily my dog did not need surgery. So. Oh, good. Was so fine. I guess. Resting. 
Like maybe she could stop eating garbage off the street. and you know. That would probably help. Yeah. Oh, well. She loves it, it though. I don't know why. It's, she'll see like a rotten banana and think that's like awesome sauce. I'm like, no, don't, don't. Dogs are just weird that way. <sighs> so, um, okay. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be talking on a facial plastic surgery panel. So that we should all be interested in that. I will be there. I'll be, I'll be like, question. <laughs> yeah, I have lots of questions. Um, be fun. Well, I yeah. haven't even been to plastic surgery at the meeting since my chief year in residency, which was oh my goodness. years ago. Yeah, well, I've been, you know, I was having three yeah, kids, so I haven't traveled. So I'm really excited to go now as an attending and knowing people and like being on a panel. It's really fun. I'm on committee It's going to be now. awesome. Yeah. It's going to be so good. Yeah, there's so many things to do and see people in, in real life and, um, Hi, everybody that's joining. And yes, garbage and raccoon poop are huge dog treats for some reason. Yeah, well, they are. She has four dogs, so she knows. Oh, my and God. She has one dog that's like on a revolving door to the vet because <laughs> he's so old and frail. <laughs> uh, um, it is. And then, um, so anyway, so let's talk. We're talking tummy tuck. Tummy recovery, tuck, right? yeah. We were going to talk about recovery after tummy tuck and got, you know, sidetracked by COVID and dog seed and garbage as we do. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any questions about tummy tuck or recovery after tummy tuck, or if my kid's screaming is too loud and you need me to shut the door, just throw it in the comments. We're keeping an eye on those. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. When I was a resident, all of our tummy tuck patients stayed overnight. Mm -hmm. same the yeah. hospital setting thing i believe i don't know yeah That's i don't know uh... it's so funny like as a resident our breast reduction stayed overnight our mm -hmm. tummy tuck stayed over like everyone stayed overnight and now i send everyone home although it's kind of different patient populations too my nanny's telling me to put the kids to bed bridget you know that's never gonna happen while i'm awake <laughs> right yeah so um <laughs> So, um, yeah, I agree. It was a different, a lot of breast reduction patients stayed because it, it actually, they, A, it was not a cost that they were going to incur and it was just, I mean, something that they did, but yeah, yeah, currently in the, in the quote real world, like you go home and it's better for you to get up and move around for starters. I think. Yeah. And your own bed is more comfortable and mm -hmm. yeah. And, and there aren't a bunch of sick, contagious people around you, which is great. Yeah, that also helps. And not some nurse coming and waking you up every 20 minutes to take your oh vital signs. God. That was the worst after having kids. I was like, can I please sleep, please? I know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I actually admitted patients still for the first year or two as an attending. And then they would call me. They'd be like, it's 8 o'clock. Can I just go home? <laughs> You're like, so, okay. Yep. So it's pretty much outpatient surgery for tummy tuck, which mm -hmm. I think is one of those operations that people think is going to be so much worse than it is most of the time. Yeah, I think so. I think the first one to two weeks can be rough. And I think it's very, it's variable. I think some patients are really, I have some patients, I, I have them come in the first day after surgery. Do you? I don't, I don't see them for a week. I call them okay. that night. So yeah, they, I call them that they're night. worried about anything, but yeah, mm -hmm. I usually wait a full week. I drag them in the next day because <laughs> I want them to come in and walk. And so some people are great and hobble in, no problem. Other people request a wheelchair and we bring them up with a wheelchair just to make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Drains are working. You don't use drains though, right? So no I do, uh, my Sometimes. I do BMI over 30. Oh, okay. And, and I do a lot of BMI over 30 as well. Right. Like I, I've done honestly even some BMI over 40 with really nice results. So I'm, oh, wow. yeah, I'm like, straddling that weird dichotomy of I'll do drainless tummy tucks, but I'll also do high BMI. Okay. Uh, which is actually pretty fun and something worth talking about. But yeah, so when I can do drainless, I love it. Patients are more comfortable. If I do need a drain, I only use one and then I end up leaving it in usually for two weeks, but that's usually my okay. higher BMI patients. And it's a pain. They don't love it. Nobody likes the drains. They're brutal. No. Yeah. I had a drain actually. I had a scar revision, my C-section scar from three C-sections, and I had it revised, and they didn't put a drain in because it was a small area, but I am a doctor, which makes me high risk for things, 
And so I got a fluid collection and I tried to drain it. And then, so eventually I had to have IR interventional radiology put in a uh -huh. drain after the fact and drag that around for a couple of weeks. And I was like, these really suck. Like they're terrible. Like yeah. there's nowhere to hide them. They're just no. annoying. Yeah. yeah. And they like tug and pull and they're uncomfortable. I know. Do you let yeah. people shower with a drain in? I do. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah, there's a lot of rules that were in place, I think, early on, either in residency or you did things, I think in residency, I think the attendees are just super conservative because it's, that's what they can control. And then you get out into the real world and you're like, no, you can totally shower. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It will be okay. You just have to hold the drain on something, a land right. around your neck, by the way, it yes. works really, really well. Yeah. So, okay. So speaking of recovery after tummy tuck, you go home that day. Do you send people home with... Um, little portable squeezers like SCDs? I don't. Okay. I tell them to get up and walk around. And if they're laying in bed for a while, I tell them to point and flex their toes 10 times like every hour. Okay. Um, in my whole practice so far, I've had one DVT slash PE in a massive skin removal patient. Mm -hmm. um, I do assess Caprini score on everybody, which assesses your risk of blood clots. Even with that, though, we know that the risk is increased, I think, for a Caprini score of four or higher. I don't anticoagulate until seven, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I was taught. It's not necessarily great based data. You know, there's not know. super strong data behind that. This is something plastic surgeons talk a lot about. Oh, DVT and PE. Thank you, Erin, for making me translate. So DVT is deep vein thrombosis. PE is pulmonary embolism. So when you get a clot in the deeper veins of your legs, a clot is a thrombosis, it can break off and travel to your lungs, which is called a pulmonary embolus, um, which can damage lung tissue or even be fatal in rare cases. And having a blood clot is higher risk anytime you have surgery because your blood is in clotting mode. And often you'll have the additional factor of being kind of immobile, which, you know, after knee surgery, you get put on anticoagulants because you're not up and walking around. With most of the operations we do as plastic surgeons, people are up and moving, but kind of to varying degrees. And also mm -hmm. with tummy tuck, if you're tightening the muscles, there's theories that it does decrease um, the venous return from your legs and maybe make you a little more prone to clotting. Yeah, again, not great literature to support that. But certainly if you've had a risk factor from something else, like you've had a clot before in your legs documented for whatever reason, or you have a history of easy, easy bruising, bleeding, those are like kind of things we screen for. If you've had a history of a lot of miscarriages, um, those are history things of that cancer, not mm -hmm. skin cancer, but any type of cancer, uh, being on hormone replacement or contraceptives mm -hmm. increases your risk a little bit and higher BMI and higher age do as well. Right, and length of surgery, but only it's over 45 minutes, so pretty much everyone gets Everything. points for yeah. that. So it is a point system, and that has been delineated. And then you, you know, get up, get however many points you are, and then that tells us a little bit about whether we should prescribe you a blood thinning medication for after surgery. Yeah, um, most people, it's just having little squeezers on on their legs when they're in surgery to help your circulation for your legs. Um, keeping their body temperature normal and not too cold, and then um, early moving around. So early walking is helpful. Um, yeah. Those things are all known entities. And so I do send people home on, they're called circulates, um, spelled C-I-R-C-U-L-8, because it's like a band or something. I don't know. It's a funny name. So, or like a license plate. Yes, it does look like a license plate. So, um, yeah, so it circulates, and they are battery-powered, and they go home on those, and they stay on for a handful of days. So if for some reason they're not walking around, I know at least there are, things are squeezing. But um, I do have them come in the next day. I most often leave drains, and then they come out the next week. Mm -hmm. But I do tell patients, right, when you get home, you know, I tell p patients to be really well hydrated before surgery. So push fluids, push water a couple days before surgery. And then when you go home, I mean, a lot of questions I get are related to how do I sleep? You know, you can put some pillows under your knees, propped up on some pillows under your back so that you're kind of in a V because that'll be more comfortable, um, certainly. And um, I do put people in a garment, so. Mm -hmm. I do as well. I okay. will use compression foam as well. And I've been doing binder over the garment. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I've had some seromas, which is annoying. That's probably one of the biggest annoyances of tummy tuck. Yeah. Um, and that has seemed to help. I do a lot of internal placation sutures. Probably do more. Everybody could always do more. Um, but yeah, I do like the top of foam and the garment. The binder just stays on over for one week and then they drop back to one of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so fluid co collections are probably the most common complication of tummy tuck and maybe um, like a little bit of a wound breakdown or um, healing issues at the incision is probably the other. Yeah, most we get like a little rim. I mean, you can mm -hmm. have big areas of wound healing problems and we've all unfortunately seen that as well. But yeah, the seromas are kind of the, the big nuisance because then you have to get them drained a lot. A lot of it I think is just patients feel deceptively well after I had mm -hmm. actually I had a tummy tuck patient text me on Saturday she's like so if I were developing a seroma it would kind of feel sloshy right mm -hmm. <laughs> she was a nurse she'd gone back to work I said were you doing a lot of bending and twisting she's like yeah the entire shift I'm like okay well we'll drain yeah. it we'll do your binder on over your garment again because when you're moving like that your skin just can't stick back down right which is probably how I got my seroma because we never slow down. Doctors and nurses are the worst patients, hands we down. Um, but seromas yeah. at least are fairly easy to deal with. They're a nuisance. You drain them several times, get some good compression, and then they, they seal up. Yeah, and then they go away. Um, so, okay, so any other tips? Do you have patients take Arnica or Bromelain? I, we carry the Syllogen Arnica Bromelain supplements. I like the Bromelain. I know there's good clinical mm -hmm. studies showing improvement in bruising and swelling i don't believe in arnica because it's homeopathy and i don't believe in homeopathy <laughs> which i don't know do you know much about homeopathy i did like an entire podcast episode on this one so i get weird about it <laughs> but homeopathy is based on this theory that the more you dilute something the more potent it is so the dilutions oh, right. are like one in a million to the point where there's like not a single molecule of the active substance so most arnica is just a sugar Pill. Um, same thing okay. with like the teething tablets. There's not anything actually in them. So scientifically, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it comes with the bromelain and I like the bromelain. So there we go. How about you? <laughs> yeah, we, bromelain. Oh, no, bromelain is not homeopathy, I don't think, Erin. Um, mm -hmm. It's an actual supplement like vitamin C or zinc. The homeopathic preparations are serially diluted to like one part in one million, whereas bromelain is just like take it a vitamin C supplement. Right. Or eating a ton of pineapple. Yes, which you can also do. And if that burns your tongue, it's not the vitamin C. There's a um, an enzyme in the pineapple and you can denature the enzyme by soaking it in salt water and then rinsing it off. Oh, I didn't know so, that. I mean, if you needed more random facts for me. More random I... facts. Well, here's a random fact. Um, did you ever read that book, Educated? The one. Mm. Um, Tara race? Westover? Yes. Oh my gosh. And her parents or her mom went from being a midwife to um, offering homeopathic medicines or essential oils or something and had that hold and still exists and you can buy them. So it's, uh, you know, one part per million of lavender oil or something. I can so. tell that. I mean, I have tap water. I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Homeopathy is really fascinating because there have been several like randomized trials on whether Arnica works. And I think most people don't really understand what homeopathy is. And I don't remember why I ever looked it up, but I read it and I was like, this is not science in any meaningful way. It, it's like some random theory from this German guy in the 1800s, kind of like chiropractic. Don't get me on that one either. But uh -oh. yeah, yeah I have lots different. of weird <laughs> esoteric knowledge. Well, chiropractic is the idea that you can cure anything by manipulating the spine and the... Sure. the the guy who created it claimed to have cured deafness by doing a spinal manipulation. I okay. think like more mainstream chiropractors just do muscle, you know, yeah. musculoskeletal Trigger manipulations point. and that's cool. But the real yeah. hardcore guys will say like, well, I can cure diabetes by adjusting your neck. It's fascinating. Yeah, no, yes, no, not, I, I agree, I agree. Yeah, but I do like to have my back cracked because- Oh, feels good, yeah. That feels amazing. Um, all right, so, okay, so bromelain, you're a fan of. I am. Um, do you have them take any other supplements, like zinc or vitamin C, or only so if they want to? The Syllogen um, Scar Gel Company makes this very convenient Arnica bromelain vitamin C zinc, and we just include oh. it with all the surgery packages. So they take it twice a day, starting two days before surgery. 
Vitamin C and zinc have been shown to help with wound healing if you're deficient at all, and you can't overdose in the short term on those. So right. I just figure it does cover bases nicely and cool. I yeah. think Aaron's writing this down. <laughs> it's called Silagen, S I L A G E N. It's from New Medical. I know they're um, scar cream. So yeah, more, yeah. So I know the company. I just didn't realize they made a because we just yeah. give people a list, and then by the time you go to Sprouts or Whole Foods, you have like 18 things. Yeah, so we just take. give them that, and then one we job. actually give them the scar gel at their one-month post-op. It, it's just included in the surgery package. They don't have mm -hmm. to worry about it. They don't have to buy it. Same with their garments. They get right. to, yeah, nice. keep it simple. What kind of, oh, so here's another topic, Erin, since she's, <laughs> she's interacting. Garments. What brand of garments? So I feel like she just recently had liposuction, and she probably... She, she wore she's gone through like 800 garments in terms of trying like we've trialed them all and we have trials with our patients we'll find one we really like and then somebody will point out oh Sounds it doesn't zip right or whatever it's the torsos are too long and then we'll switch again or because of the last two years it's been so hard for shipping and distribution <laughs> that um so, you know we'll have a company that we like working with their garments are great but then we're like, you where's the stuff them. we ordered? Yeah. So we've used Marina, Isabella, um, Clearpoint Medical. That's who um, I use now. Okay. That's who and, we mostly use now. Yeah, they fit most people pretty well. There are always people who it doesn't fit right. And I'm like, go to Kohl's, get some Spanx. It's better <laughs> than nothing. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, those hook and eye closures in the groin area are, are a little tricky. I wore a clear point medical. Well, when I had lipo, I wore an Isabella, and then I got a Clearpoint Medical for my office. And, like, it's not bad. It's pretty yes. healthy. Yeah. So, yeah, there are so many versions of garments. So, yeah, I think we used Isabella, and then we had shipping issues and switched to Clearpoint, yeah. which has been mostly okay. And so. the funny thing is, like, I've always called it a garment, but I have so many patients who call it a faja. Oh, yeah. So Faha, I think, yes, they call it a Faha or a Faha board. So that board that you can yeah, put there's in. there's like a board that goes in. This is a whole thing that yeah. I have learned about from patients. Yeah, whole niche of like garments. Um, I know. And then people are like, you should just design one that has, I'm like, no, no. I, there <laughs> yeah. are people better skilled than me doing this. Yeah. Right, I, right. I mean, it's never going to be perfect. Sometimes people just end up in a binder because... They're very short waisted, or the garments a pain in the butt. Yeah, yes. I think I there agree. are many surgeons who don't use garments at all, and that still boggles my mind. I just feel yeah. like everything would be sliding around and uncomfortable. I feel like that would be yes, not frightening. But yes, people sometimes choose not to wear them because of all the things we just described. It's a hassle. Yeah. I, who knows? It's funny when I did. Um, I've done a lot of burn surgery in my day. I did some as a general surgery resident and some as a um, plastic surgery resident. And um, compression garments are useful for patients who've had burns yeah. for uh, flattening the scar. Yeah. And UCSD um, actually had, and I don't know if this is still true, they had seamstresses that would custom make the burn patient's garments. And there was like a room with sewing machines and they would come and get fitted. And it was um, unique in that way. It was one of the few places that did that, but it was super effective. It's just, you know, manpower and expensive and all those things, but. Pretty amazing though. Could you imagine though, if you're like, oh yeah, so after your tummy tuck, you're just going to go meet the seamstresses and they will custom yeah. make a garment for they, you. They will make it bespoke, which is my favorite word. <laughs> it's it so fancy. <laughs> Maybe I should hook up with a tailor. Yeah. And just be like, oh yeah, we, we alter garments. Yeah, we should fun. create bespoke garments. There we go. Oh my gosh, it would be so ridiculously expensive. And by the time they got shipped to you, you would be all healed. Uh, which reminds me of another thing. Do you recommend lymphatic massage? Because that's another thing people read about and they wonder like, how important is this? So early on, I didn't really recommend it. I sort of moved in that direction because I do think it helps. It's funny, I was on Clubhouse. I don't know if that's still a thing. I'm, are you yeah, on that Clubhouse? Okay. I, I have an account I never logged yeah, on. I haven't been on there. So I was on a clubhouse panel about plastic surgery recovery or like this. I can't even remember. And um, I remember because they had one of the local um, 
massage therapist. She's local to San Diego. And I was like, oh, cool, mm -hmm. Kathleen's on this call. And she does manual lymphatic drainage. And I remember her also from when I did a lot of breast reconstruction at the Navy hospital, we would refer patients to her for that too, after having node biopsies and had arm swelling. Um, so anyway, so I'm excited to see her on there. And then I also see Karen Horton, who's another friend of mine yeah. from San Francisco. And the panel moderator asks a question about lymphatic drainage. And Karen's like, I don't know anything about it except what my massage therapist told me, which was that it's nonsense. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, do you see who else is on the call? There's a massage she doesn't care. So then I, Kathleen was talking about it and I do think it's helpful. And I have the patient feedback is, it, you yeah. know, I recommend it. I don't require it, obviously. And they, the ones that go really, really feel like it makes a difference. And it makes sense. It's sort of like, manual compression right i mean it no i love it i wish i could find a massage therapist in cleveland who offers lymphatic massage because my patients have looked too and haven't had any success i have a oh, friend really? who's a massage therapist i'm like get certified in lymphatics um yeah have, you don't want just somebody who's gonna you know yeah they need to I, know I've what they're told patients though if they're really concerned about swelling i'm like you know what look up a youtube video it's not something you're you're going to hurt yourself with. It's very right. light massage. Right. Um, and you just kind of need to be going in the direction of the lymphatics. So if anyone right. knows a good lymphatic massage therapist in Cleveland, give me a shout out. Yeah. Yeah. I know that would be helpful. Yeah. We have more than one. So um, yeah. you're yeah. in the big city. I'm in the Midwest. Yeah. That's right. I know. We can probably get somebody who would do it for your dog, to be honest. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. I bet you could. <laughs> Um, okay, so lymphatic massage, we talked about supplements, compression garments, staying hydrated, um, sleeping properly. Yeah. What else do you... Um, oh, activity restrictions. I feel like mm -hmm. I am always reining my patients in. I had one lovely lady, Saroma, and I was like, what have you been doing this week? She's like, well, let's see. On Tuesday, I delivered a bunch of Avon. I'm like, you had surgery on Monday. Why are you... <laughs> no. Go home and sleep. No. Yeah. Yeah. So no. taking it easy. Yeah. Yes. I've been telling people, stay home, take naps, have someone watch your children. Mm -hmm. Don't be doing a lot. And then once the drain is out or week one to two, then you can like start doing some short walks, but not yeah. like 10 mile hikes. Right. Because usually at that, again, sometimes at the two week mark, I get. So Peloton, okay? No. Oh. Or actually, I don't remember that. <laughs> one of my patients. She was probably three weeks out, and I knew she had a planned trip to Hawaii after surgery at, like, four to six weeks, which I, like, we had talked about it in advance and that, oh, uh, I promise I'm not going to do anything, you know, I'm just going to lay by the pool. So I always, if I know someone's going out of town, I see them right, kind of right before they go out of town. Right. So I'm like, oh, you're so excited for your trip. And she's like, yeah. So scuba diving? Oh. <laughs> no. Um. I mean, like, do you scuba dive? She's like, no, but I thought I'd learn. No, no, this is not yeah. the trip to learn. I know. Put it We're on all pause. Terrible. I mean, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I, I thought I'd weeks, ask. She at four weeks, I will let people like get back to more activity, but still, even core exercises, like, hold off on that. We just yeah. repaired some muscles. Yes, take it easy. Four weeks. Two yep. weeks, you can start moving around. But I tell them it's four to six weeks of protecting that um, diastasis repair. So bringing your yep. core muscles together and suturing them down. And you really want to not pressure that and like have, have that stick. So right. yeah, it's, you're right. It's hard. I feel like the first two weeks people are a little sore and kind of, you know, slowed down a little bit. And then it's a, the next two weeks. So weeks two to four where you're like, you know, pump your brakes, take a little, take a little time off. Yes. Maybe yes. that's not the time to like deep clean the house or whatever. It is. <laughs> no, I know you're off. It seems like a good idea. It's not. Right. Right. Cool. Yeah. So, wow, that went fast, I think. I Most know. We talked about sick dogs. And when do your kids start school? Um, let's see. My son starts second grade on Monday. My daughter's kindergarten, so her first day is not till Thursday because she has to go to meet her teacher and everything. Oh, that's super cute. Yay. Yeah. How about yours? So my fourth grader started today and my eighth and my 10th grader start manana. It's so early. I know. That's they got so out. The older two were done by like Memorial Day. They're like, summer was so short. I'm like, oh, it's fine. I'm 
I know it's it's good when they're back. We are totally losing your internet connection. Oh, okay. Well, we'll figure we'll give it out. a second. See if it comes back. Uh oh. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to figure out our topic for next time. Probably two weeks or so. Usually, yeah. we can look yeah. at calendars. Any? Yeah. Any requests for topics for next time, guys? I guess no. Erin says they start on a Thursday. Yes, that is true because their last day of school was a Wednesday. Whatever logic that is. That's I don't right. Know. Yeah. So whatever. I don't. I've long stopped caring about what when school starts and stops because it makes no sense ever. Um, oh, yeah. Supplements. <laughs> we Aaron, have you been checking out my podcast topics? <laughs> I stopped my podcast like over a year, two years ago, but yeah, supplements are a fun topic. I actually took a class in med school on food, drug, and biotech law, which was oh, wow. entertaining. Yeah. So yeah. interesting stuff there. Let's talk about that. I think that'll be good. That would yeah. be a good topic. Cool. And whether, you know, collagen actually helps healing or not. <gasps> yeah. That's yeah. good things. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'll have to do a little research probably before, but it sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Have a good evening. You too. Stay healthy. Yeah, you too. Bye. Okay. Bye.